How do the most successful people spend the first hour of their day? How do CEOs, entrepreneurs, A players spend their first waking hour? And how does it contribute to their success? Apply these now and watch your life change. Welcome to the Absolute Approach Podcast with Clara Day H. And this is your health episode. Namaste, this is Clara, yoga and meditation teacher, entrepreneur, author and global speaker. Welcome to the Absolute Approach Podcast by Clara Day H. Let this podcast serve as your mighty and soul-driven map in this life. Just because the perfect life that you dream of is not happening this second, it does not mean that it's never going to happen. Driven by power and purpose, you can paint your perfect life with the Absolute Approach. Each week, I will be sharing with you my insights on the most important pillars of our lives, our mind, body, spirit, wealth, and relationships. Expect compelling and sometimes unorthodox views on wellness, entrepreneurship, success, manifestation, and love. If you are on a quest of taking a quantum leap to live the life that you have always visualized, this podcast is for you. Do you believe that every person can adapt to a pattern and most times we are a product of our practices, whether negative or positive? Now the possibilities became endless for me just by simply adjusting how I set the tone of each day. So I want to share this with you. I have followed a powerful 10-step routine over the years and it has never failed me. So number one, remember your dreams as soon as you wake up. Record them and share if possible. Now this process is very effective and improves your memory and sets your focus for the day. You might not believe it, but there are messages in your dreams that can help you with specific situations you might come across in your conscious state. There are several stories in the Old Testament where dreams communicated critical messages. In Genesis, Joseph the dreamer's faith manifested in his dreams. In the New Testament, Joseph the father of Jesus was advised to wed Mary instead of sending her back to her parents as he planned to. Now whether you are religious or not, you understand that dreams are significant and they can make a lot of difference in your life if you pay attention. They can invoke creative abilities that you never knew you possessed and help you develop solutions to problems. Now, according to Jim Quick, our brains are active in sleep. So even while we sleep, there is still a part of our minds that analyzes and tries to find solutions to our problems. And more often than not, these solutions are much better than what we would have thought while conscious. For example, Elias Howe got the idea of the invention of the sewing machine from a dream he had. When you are aware of this reality, the phrase sleep on it begins to make more than just a stalling technique to you. Now, number two, make your bed. This routine might seem unrelated to your general success in life, but it is more related to the grand scheme of things than you think. You may have heard about making your bed first thing in the morning a lot, but it does make a difference. Making your bed when you get up in the morning puts you into the law of momentum wherein an object in motion remains in motion and an object at rest stays at rest until an external force acts upon them. Now, once you make your bed every morning, you embody a distinct sense of responsibility. Once you start your day with an accomplishment as simple as tidying up your bed, it puts your brain in do mode, causing you to seek more achievements, increasing your productivity. Accomplishing a simple task like making your bed gives you a kickstart to complete your to-do list. Try this simple trick and you will be surprised at how unexpectedly motivating it will be for you. You can also think of it as your present to yourself, coming home to a clean, fresh bed after a hard day's work. So number three, brush your teeth with the opposite hand and scrape your tongue. Brushing your teeth in the morning is probably already part of your morning routine and you might think that it is the same for everyone, but research shows that 
30% of adults do not brush their teeth as often as they should. However, this concept goes beyond your regular oral hygiene practice as it aims to rewire your brain by giving it new information and training it to accept the unfamiliar, hence increasing neuroplasticity and neurogenesis. Neuroplasticity is the ability to create new connections in the brain by acquiring and implementing novel information. Meanwhile, neurogenesis is the ability to create new brain cells. Every time you repeat a thought or action, you strengthen the neural pathways from which they occur. This process is like building muscles through exercise in the sense that the more you work out, the more you toned you become. Now, in summary, what you are doing when you practice something consistently increasing increases your brain's ability to function by gradually making the unfamiliar familiar and challenging the customary to produce results. Practice, you can say, makes progress. Now, brushing your teeth with a non-dominant hand is an exercise for the brain's neuroplasticity. You will observe significant change within the first three days of trying it out as it gets easier and less awkward as time goes on. Not only does this exercise make you less rigid, but it also increases your mental toughness while showing you the infinite possibilities that you can tap into if you open your mind and take actions. Similarly, any upgrade you apply in your wellness practices, including nutrition and fitness, will feel awkward initially, just like brushing your teeth with your non-dominant hand. Eventually, the more you practice, the easier it will get and the more natural it will seem, giving you inevitable progress as time goes by. Alright, so, did I mention that scraping your tongue is very important? Now, in Ayurveda, cleaning the tongue is recommended because it gets rid of foul odor in your mouth by removing the bacteria in your tongue. When done right, this habit is a simple way of getting rid of toxins in your body that affect your digestive system because the oral cavity is directly linked to it. And if you do not have it yet, a tongue scraper, get one immediately. Number four, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. When I studied in India, my guru, during our lessons on holistic lifestyle told us that drinking water first thing in the morning helps jumpstart our metabolism, alkalize our body system, flush out toxins, and fuel our brain. Now, the importance of drinking water cannot be overemphasized. Our bodies use a lot of water during sleep. Therefore, it is imperative to replenish and hydrate as soon as you wake up. Making this a habit will help improve your lifestyle and your body's health. If possible, according to my guru, drink water that has been in a copper container overnight to help alkalize the water. Otherwise, drink warm water with lemon and honey. If you're vegan, omit the honey, which has beneficial effects like maintaining the alkalinity of our body and promoting good digestion. I drink at least one liter of water every morning. Then after my activities like walking or a few rounds of sun salutations, I also drink warm water with lemon because the calories in lemon help break my fasted state. All right, number five, breathing practice and meditation. Now, my guru asked us once if we could control our breathing. Some of us answered yes, while the rest of us thought otherwise. He explained that while we can consciously manage our breath by inhaling and exhaling, a life force governs our breath and energy referred to in Sanskrit as prana, hence the term pranayama. Okay. Before you doubt this concept, consider this. Ask yourself, 
If there has ever been a time during your day when you forgot to breathe because you were so preoccupied with the demands of your career or family. If you're honest, you will realize that breathing is something you have been doing without conscious thought. So your lungs work even when you aren't paying attention. And that's the life force that binds each being at work. And God is indeed amazing. So why do we need to perform breathing exercises and how do we do it? Before meditation, breathing practices are recommended to clear out the nasal passages for our bodies to optimize the breathing process properly. Breath, after all, is what connects our body, mind, and spirit. Think of each breath as a bridge that connects you to your spiritual nature and improves your perception of yourself when appropriately used. So when you need to calm down, breathe. When you need to concentrate, focus, or be mindful, breathe. When you want to tap into the deeper states of your mind through stillness and meditation, breathe. Through mindful breathing practices, you can consciously fortify this powerful life force that is easily accessible to you at any moment. Are you ready to try it? Okay, start fully concentrating on your inhalation and your exhalation. Just feel the gentle air that goes into your nostrils and the warm air that goes out. Inhale, exhale. Now close your eyes and release the tension on your eyebrows. Continue breathing, your jaws, your neck, and relax your shoulders. If your tongue is on the roof of your mouth, gently release it. Now observe your breath and how it calms your mind and your body. Expand your belly like a small balloon, inflating as you exhale. As you exhale, allow your belly to deflate. Practice mindful belly breathing, counting from 10 to 1. One round of inhalation and exhalation is one count. Now, what do you notice as a result of your few moments of breath awareness? Were you calmer, more peaceful, and more aware of your body and yourself? Observe. Now, meditation. We practice meditation not to be good at it, but, be, but to be good at life. These are the words of Emily Fletcher, one of the world's top meditation teachers. It may seem intimidating or even boring because of how used we have gotten to being on the go all the time. Now, who has time to sit for 10 to 15 minutes and do nothing? think about it. It may be intimidating because of the stereotype about meditation practitioners, seeing them as hermit-type individuals with long beards detached from the world. Another challenge for most people is a perceived ability to make their minds follow their lead and quiet down. It leads them to ask questions like, how can I meditate when my mind is not clear? Or, how do I stop my thoughts from interrupting? This is usual. Now to answer the above questions, I would like you to understand that there is always a way when you are willing. Also, you need to get rid of the untrue image you have concerning meditation and accept it as a gift that anyone can access. It is more of a way of coping with life than anything else. Whenever people complain they can't meditate because their minds are always busy, I enlighten them that a clear and steady mind is not a prerequisite of meditation. Instead, it is an effect of consistent meditation, emphasis on consistency. Similarly, people are hesitant to get into a yoga practice because they are not flexible without understanding that a strong and flexible body results from consistent yoga practice. Again, emphasis on consistency. 
Achieving this level of consistency is a challenge for many people, but it is possible. The first step in building this habit is to change your language. Now, instead of saying, I have to meditate, now tell your mind, I choose to do my meditation practice because I enjoy it and I am getting better at it every time I practice. During your meditation, if you feel the need to scratch an itch or move your leg because of cramps, you may do so. These typical discomforts are not excuses for us to avoid meditation. As a meditation teacher, I would rather have you sit and lean against a wall or use a chair and experience the benefits of a calm mind than have you uncomfortable and struggling through the cramps or itching, all the while judging yourself. Now, I have nothing against traditional practices and I have complete respect for the time-honored methods. Still, I also believe in promoting what people can quickly adopt to and have the most rewarding meditation experience. Therefore, I do not want to exempt anyone from it because of some temporary physiological ache that can be dealt with easily. All right. And let's move on to number six, the miracles I experienced today. How many times have you heard someone say that journaling or writing about every single thing you're grateful for is a game changer? Your answer might be never or like me. You have heard this life hack so often that it does not sound impactful to you anymore. Now, if the latter is your case, I understand entirely. Most leaders, motivational speakers, coaches all give similar advice concerning this topic such as having a gratitude journal is a powerful tool for you to achieve your goals, have abundance, prosperity, and happiness in life. Now, I'm not trying to negate this concept or downplay its importance. My only aim is to suggest a better journaling approach, mainly writing about what you are grateful for. A gratitude journal helps you remember your wins, no matter how trivial they seem. For example, you may write in your journal that you could stick to your meal plan or that you could work out just as you planned to. You may also show that you slept earlier than usual and got up earlier than planned, giving you a long time to accomplish your tasks for the day. You can include even the slightest pounds or kilograms or inches that you shed because of the small habits you committed to doing for your health. Now, this activity allows you to take credit for your wins, propelling you to aim higher. Being grateful is something that most of us do not do because we're so consumed with the seemingly endless tasks that we have to attend to and our perceived abilities, we fail to see any reason to be thankful. However, writing your achievements, no matter how small, will program your brain to seek more wins and see a positive side to every challenge. Now, changing your routine and seeing results produce the chemical called dopamine in your brain, making you feel good about yourself and eager to do more and get better results. Dopamine is a chemical transmitter in our brains that acts as a messenger between neurons. It is produced when we experience moments of happiness, pleasure, or satisfaction. Now, when we link an event with delight, the excitement it brings may increase our dopamine production. Things that bring us joy like accomplishments, a specific activity, a kind of food, or a special person may be factors for dopamine release. Now, instead of labeling your journal as gratitude journal, make it the miracles I experienced today. Now, this shift in language has influenced how I see every moment of my life, causing me to appreciate each second and see it as a miracle and magic from an abundant source. It made me understand that we are here to welcome the unfolding of life's beauty and our soul's purpose which refers to the gap we are meant to fill in this lifetime now can i remind you again that life your life is wondrous and grand and that you are worthy of all the magic in it 
As a way of infusing some more positive energy into this habit, you may divide each page of your The Miracles I Experienced Today journal into five columns or sections. These sections are the five most important pillars of your life where harmony may thrive or miss. The five most important pillars of your life are body, mind, spirit, relationships, and wealth. In each column or section, write the miracle you witnessed in that area or a specific event associated with a particular pillar that made you grateful for it. By practicing this, you will bring forth positivity in each area of your life. And those that you thought lacked magic before could make you realize that there is progress and something worth celebrating that you previously ignored. Do this now and all the magic is waiting to be recognized so they can multiply in ways that will surprise you. Number seven, fasted walking or cycling. Now, have you heard of fast and slow metabolism and how they both affect every individual's physique, weight management, and overall health depending on the type of work in their body? Now, fasted steady cardio, either as walking or steady pace and or cycling, has been my staple workout for years. It makes sense to see two evolutionary and time-honored practices combined to give us more focus, reduced belly fat, enhanced core, leg strength, increased energy, longevity, beauty, and ultimately, better cardiovascular health. Now begin your day with at least 20 minutes of walking in a fasted state. Simply put, when we're not eating or consuming calories, we are in a fasted state. Our glycogen storage depletes when we have not eaten for 12 to 16 hours. This state inhibits insulin production. A decrease in insulin levels activates hormones that strengthen the human body, such as human growth hormones hormone produced by our pituitary gland which stimulates cell production and regeneration anti-aging hormone ketones and glucagon now these hormones help maintain muscle strength improve thinking decrease inflammation and burn body fat i do fasting for health and spiritual reasons the countless benefits of fasting for our health have been proven for centuries and fasting has many benefits for our mental, physical, and spiritual facets. It dramatically increases our mental toughness, essential for enhancing productivity and performance. Now for spiritual reasons, I do fasting because I realize that we have imbibed the ideas of consumerism for a very long time, when in fact, there's not much that we need to live. Whether it is food or other material things, we are constantly motivated to consume by the media, the corporations, and people around us. Obesity has rapidly increased because of overconsumption of tasty, addictive, easily accessible, and inflammatory foods, not to mention the sedentary lifestyle that overconsumption of content from our blue screens has caused us to embrace. Now, through my inner journey all these years, I realized that we can live on bare essentials and be genuinely happy if we choose to. Now, society has conditioned us to think that we will be happy when, in cert certain wants. For example, we will be happy when we get this person, we get this financial stability, but why can't we be joyful in the present moment even before the desired event or outcome? This mentality of I will be happy when has led to enormous frustration in people, leading them to mindlessly consume when they do not get what they want in life. Now, are you guilty of indulging in sweets and refined carbs when you feel depressed? That it has become a temporary band-aid for the pain of your attachment to unfulfilled expectations. 
If your answer is yes, I completely understand you because I have been there too. Before I started my spiritual journey, I resorted to the fatal combination of smoking, drinking, partying, and excessive character assassination of people disguised as jokes to cover up my insecurities whenever I got exasperated by the turn of events in my life. Now, another spiritual benefit of fasting is that I can now empathize with millions of people worldwide who do not know when their next meal will be. Okay, so the most popular form of fasting is 16 to 8, meaning you fast for 16 hours a day and eat within an 8-hour window. This model is one of the most common forms of intermittent fasting and as the name implies, it's designed to force your body into utilizing fat stores as energy. It may help you lose weight as well as fuel your fitness goals and mental well-being. Fasting for a set number of hours each day would be easier on the body than a fast which lasts for days since hunger controls actions and thoughts now before consuming breakfast in the morning put on your comfortable walking shoes and bask under the beautiful sunlight while enjoying this low impact almost effortless exercise walking encourages free-flowing thoughts which helps you think more clearly i use this time to listen to an audiobook or podcasts or, or audio affirmations or mantras in Sanskrit. Now disclaimer, if you have a medical condition or injuries, consult your doctor before fasting. Number eight, strength training. Now my book, How to Never Diet Forever, is about eating well and exercising three to five times a week because you choose to. It's all about performing exercises to build muscle mass and being dedicated to eating anything within reason and without weight gain. Now, don't get me wrong. Strength training or HIIT exercises do not outweigh healthy food choices and moderate food intake. However, a simple strength training is practical for most of us and will work for the long haul. You do not need to go to the gym or invest in expensive equipment such as home gyms unless you are one of those people who are at, the fit, at a certain fitness level and can afford it. Just be aware of your intentions. Dumbbells with different plates and kettlebells with varying weights are sufficient. To gain muscle without gaining fat, start with 2-3 to three sets for exercise or 10 to 12 reps and eventually build up to four to five sets per exercise you can also do circuits to save time if you are tight on time and still want to burn fat and gain muscle circuit training is the way to go you can alternate between low reps of high intensity and medium reps of medium intensity or do them together in sets so here are some examples Lifting weights or calisthenics, push-ups, lunges, squats, deadlifts, rows, pull-ups. Now, high-intensity interval training is great for fat burning, but combining it with strength training is key. Strength training will build muscle via the anabolic pathway. We all know that having healthy body metabolic rate is essential to good health. So we cannot simply deny ourselves food to lose weight. Weight loss can be accomplished with a simple lifestyle change. The key is making time for sleep and exercise. Even if it's just 30 minutes of body weight training at home in the morning and strength training 3-5 to five times per week. Mobility exercises. Now, after your exercise, make sure that you include mobility training such as yoga, foam rolling routine, stretching, or light calisthenics to aid the body's transition from a state of workout to a state of rest. Mobility exercises also prevent muscle tightness and soreness to avoid too much pain the next day. Number nine, cold shower. So here's how I maintain a healthy lifestyle by following the natural healing practices 
of Ayurveda which include my time-honored Ayurvedic diet. I will also present modern research as anecdotal evidence to show how these various techniques can effectively help you manage weight or maintain your healthy ideal body weight while consuming moderate amounts of protein, carbs, or fat. Now use cold showers for autophagy, saunas for detoxification, and fasting to reset your system. By following these natural practices, you can live a healthy lifestyle. Now, cold shower therapy was introduced to the West by Dr. John F. Barnes, who used it to help people lose weight. It's a simple but powerful technique which merely involves jumping into a cold shower or standing in cold water for around 10 minutes a day. The cold shock to your skin will cause the hypothalamus, the part of your brain that regulates hunger, and other parts of your brain concerned with controlling your temperature to work more efficiently. It kicks off fat burning and fat burning hormones such as insulin like growth factor IGF-1, commonly known as anabolic steroids. Studies show that cold showers can increase your metabolic rate by 3.9% after 30 minutes of cold showering, jumping to 12% after an hour. However, the cold shock effect is only temporary, so you do this for about 10 minutes every day to maintain the fat burning and adipose fat storage. Cold showers help with mental toughness as well. For me, the idea of submitting my body and mind to something so uncomfortable is not easy, but it has helped me improve my productivity and warrior mindset. Before I jump into the cold shower, I tell myself, I am mentally tough. And before I realize it, I am already drying myself up, feeling proud that I have accomplished a challenging task in the first part of my day. That mental toughness affects everything else I choose to tackle for the day. Cold showers have plenty of health benefits as and some of them are Improve blood pressure and digestion, great for relieving stress, improving circulation, and reducing muscle tension. Now before we proceed, let me ask you, are you afraid to talk to people? No matter how much you try, you never get around it. One of the most important steps people can take to overcome social anxiety is gradually increasing their tolerance for the uncomfortable. Doing things outside their comfort zone helps them overcome their initial fear of social situations. A cold shower is a great way to practice embracing what is uncomfortable. Cold showers are a great way to build mental toughness, which is vital to overcoming various disempowering thoughts in our heads. Yes, taking a cold shower is uncomfortable. But training to embrace it will make you a better person, and I say this from experience. The cold shower is the ultimate energy boost. It works by activating the body's natural energy production. Drinking coffee has benefits, but what's even better than that? A cold shower. Number 10. Read. What almost all titans and successful people have in common is reading. They read many books. Amazingly, you can read a book to learn what the author spent years figuring out in a few hours. Unfortunately, most people find it challenging to read regularly. This challenge was also true for me for many years. I wanted to read more books, but I couldn't find the time, energy, or willpower to do so consistently. But all of that changed when I established a morning routine. I now read at least 20 pages of book every morning and I've discovered excellent benefits. So how do you do this? Set the alarm for a particular time every morning for reading. By building a healthy morning routine, you consciously work to improve yourself and achieve your goals. 
Doing this in the morning is tremendously effective as it becomes increasingly challenging as the day progresses because by the time you have worked the whole day, your desire will decline. Your ability to focus will diminish and it will be more challenging to read a book without getting tired or distracted. It took a lot of practice to read in the morning but I've completed so many more books than I did when I would try to read before bed. So read and enjoy every moment that you are expanding your mind. Now the techniques that you have heard and I have shared are routines that you can embark on in the first hour of any day to have a glorious day. You can immediately adopt these new practices or incorporate them into your routine if you have one. And if by any chance you already have them on your list, keep going. You are on the right track. Make a habit of getting up and being thankful for at least three things for that day. Or just telling yourself three things that can make you happy. It could also be people, by the way. It could go like this. I am so thankful I woke up this morning. Not everyone did. I am so blessed that I get to eat fresh fruits this morning. These are my favorite. I am so happy that I am in love with an amazing man or woman. I am so thrilled that the shower is running today. I finally get to use it. It could be anything at all that makes you joyful no matter how little or trivial it might appear. And if you are listening to this before April 2022, my book, How to Never Diet Forever, The Nine Powerful Secrets to Live a Life of Beauty, Longevity, and Fulfillment Without Counting Calories Ever, will be released a few weeks from now. And we will be announcing how you can pre-order via my socials at Clarity H. Make sure you're following me so you can grab the signed limited first edition stay tuned and thank you for joining me in this week's episode of the absolute approach podcast by clara day h download this episode or share it with the people you care for let's connect through my socials at clara day h you can send in your questions or share what you think of this week's episode see you next tuesday and until then believe in your power and embrace your purpose. Stay amazing, my friend. Namaste.